Hello everyone, it's Deborah from Attic Lane and today I want to share eight cards made from one stamp set. The stamp set is called Crazy Daisies and it's released by Craftwork Cards. So for card one, I'm going to use a clear Versamark ink, white embossing powder, super smooth uh, stamping postcards from Craftwork Cards and Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide ink. The reason I'm using this card is because it's so smooth it takes ink coverage really really nicely. So I'm going to ink up my stamps, which I've already uh, put onto blocks, and I'm using the uh, clear, you won't be able to see very much of this, because I've used the clear ink pad and now I'm using white embossing powder. Uh, you might be able to see it a little bit if I shimmer it for you. That's it once it's been heat set. So that's dry, and I'm going to use the Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to begin covering my card. Now I want to have a strong colour at the right hand side of the card and I want it to fade and soften away into the white on the left hand side of the card. So I'm going over with quite a light pressure to begin with to give myself a general all over coverage and then you'll see I go back to the extreme right hand side and darken it up. You take your time with this, it's a really nice technique to do, it's really gentle and you can produce some lovely effects with your inks using different intensities of shading, making it lighter, making it darker, fading the colour down your card. So that's the base of my first card complete and I'm going to move on to card two because I'm using exactly the same technique but I'm masking across the centre of the card. So that's my blue strip and I've kept it in place with some removable adhesive and you can see that I've done the same technique as before. I've stamped my images, I've heat embossed them with white embossing powder and now I'm using uh, Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink and I'm going to shade from the centre out towards the topmost edge. Again it highlights these daisy stamps really beautifully. Normally when you're using uh, a background stamp it's static but because there are so many little stamps in this set you can decide how you want your background to look and when I take away that centerpiece you can see what a beautiful effect you get on the card. Now these are two die cuts and these are ones I use an awful lot. The first one there is from My Favourite Things and it's called Celebrate and I'll show you uh, another set that I use all the time when we get to that point. But for now I'm inking up a piece of card with peacock feathers again because I want to cut my word from that. Now this is the second stamp set, sorry, this is the second die set that I use quite a lot. It's from W plus 9 and it's called Basic Greetings Die and I will put the details of where I got these at the bottom of the video. I'm using Seedless Preserves which was the colour I used for my first card because I want to cut my words in the same shade. Now what I'm doing is I'm not actually cutting them out of the block colour. I want to get that variation of colour so I'm actually putting my dye halfway across the dark and halfway across the light. And you can see I get that variation of colour. And so when I add it to my card, when I glue that in place, that will look really pretty. I've done the same with my Celebrate Word. And when I pop that out and show you, it's, uh, it's got that variation of colour and it sits beautifully in the middle of my card. I've cut out two extra words, celebrate words, out of white card and I'm going to layer these on top of each other and I'm going to use my quickie glue pen to glue the backs and then uh, secure them to each other and I don't know if you can see, it gives me a little bit of extra depth to my word and it means that when I glue the word on, here you can maybe see it a little bit clearer, the word actually pops from the card better. Uh, the inevitable wink of Stella uh, we'll go over the top of the hello just to give it some shimmer and shine. I will do exactly the same with my Celebrate card and once both of these cards are finished and dry I will mount them onto black backing card and I will show you in close up at the end how they look. Moving on to card three then. This is going to be all about masking because the whole objective of this video is to show you how to get the maximum bang for your buck from one set of stamps. So in the middle of my white card I've placed some repositionable tape 
and I'm going to use that to prevent ink going where I don't want it on my card. So because this stamp set has got some little hearts and some little dots in between each of the larger petals, it makes it more difficult to mask them off. So what you need to do is use the pens, uh, I've used Peacock Feathers, Picked Raspberry and Mermaid Lagoon to draw around each of those leaves. And you can see it doesn't take very long, but it means that you're not uh, being caught out with some of those little hearts being uh, going onto your card in a place that you don't want because you can't mask them off. So if you're just working with the petals, it's much easier. So that's the card finished as far as the stamping is concerned and I'm going to remove the tape so you can get a sense of how neat and sharp that edge is. I'm using my W plus nine dies again. This time I'm using the word smile and as before I'm going to use my glue pen to layer it up. Now I've, um, I've cut my smile word out in black card and now I'm covering it in clear embossing powder and I'm going to heat set it and that will give the word some extra dimension and a little bit of shimmer and sparkle. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to do this twice. In the old days you would have used uh, ultra thick embossing powder but I don't think people use that as much as they, they used to. So uh, instead of doing it with one pass you just have to do it two or three times. This is uh, after two. So now I'm gluing that to my card and you can see I've already mounted my design onto a black base card and I'm using my block just to weight the word down. I don't want to uh, squash it and squash away all that lovely dimension in there. To complete the card, I'm going around the outside edge uh, with two wavy lines with a fine black marker pen. And some Nouveau ebony black drops will dot my little eye and it saves me faffing around with a tiny little scrap of black card to make that, uh, to complete that word. That's it done. For card four, I'm using exactly the same technique, so I've got my white clear Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp up my daisies over the bottom two thirds of my card and then I'm going to cover them in white embossing powder and I'm going to heat set that. This is another way to show you how versatile these stamps are to create your own background because you can position these and cover as much of your card as you want or as little as you want. So hopefully you can see there now it's been heat embossed that uh, the top third is free. It's white space. The three colours that I'm using are Cracked Pistachio, Twisted Citron and Picked Raspberry and they're all from the Distress Oxide range. And I'm going to cover uh, my daisies all over my card. The uh, black piece of card there is just to try and prevent my fingers from getting too inky. I'm, I'm so messy at this and so I always get myself in a bit of a pickle so I'm trying to be a little bit cleaner in how I work. I love this uh, twisted citron colour, it's really bright and really vibrant and the picked raspberry there just lifts the whole thing and you should be able to see where the design ends at the top there. So now I have my cutting mat and my finger cutting tool and I'm going to go around the top edge and I'm going to cut away all of the white card uh, that's not needed for this design. I've used um, another stamp set from Craftwork Cards. This was from the Julie Loves Patchwork uh, kit. I believe it's available on Craftwork Cards website but I will double check that for you. So I've inked up on black card and I've used white heat embossing uh, to make the word pop and uh, I've put with love and you can see it's uh, the card uh, is split in two in effect and to complete the look I'm using Nouveau Crystal Drops. These ones are called Ivory Seashell and when the card is dry they give a really nice pop and shimmer. For card five, I'm using the same technique. So it's clear ink, white embossing powder, and then heat set. I haven't covered the whole card in daisies this time. They 
they go diagonally across the card. So here I have Distress Oxide ink again. This is called Antique Linen. And I'm just going over the top corners with this. I'm not going to cover the whole card with this. And this one is Vintage Photo. And I'm using that to go around uh, the top and then darken the edges uh, to, to bring the tone down a little bit. It's very clean, it's very white at the moment, and I want to just bring that down a little bit more and begin to reveal the stamping on the card. Now this is Nouveau Mousse. The colour is Indian Gold. And as you can see, I'm just applying that with my finger. And once it's complete, and I mount it onto the craft card, I think that looks quite nice and shimmery, but I don't want the gold to be the dominant colour. So I'm using titanium white acrylic paint, and I'm going to use that to colour in the petals. I've watered my acrylic paint down until it's quite thin, so when I apply the paint, it won't completely obliterate the design of the petal. It will just create a nice white layer on top. I think that gives quite a pretty effect. The word that I'm going to put onto this card is going to come again from my W plus 9 die set and I'm using the word thanks and I've cut that from white card. I've also mounted the golden design onto a piece of white backing card. Now I've got some gold twine and I'm going to uh, take that around my card several times and then I'm going to tie it in uh, a little knot on the front. To keep all of that in place, I'll use my glue and uh, secure that to the craft card base. That will then keep the thread where I want it as well. I'm using a wet glue again because if I slightly um, get the, the positioning wrong, I've got some wiggle room with that wet glue. Once again, I'm using my glue pen to go over the word so it will stick in place. And I'm completing the card with some dots in the top corner there. And I'm doing this with uh, Imagination Crafts, Just Pearls, and this one is called Pure Gold. And my card is finished. Card six is fun. It's a little bit different. So I've got a frame. I've got a piece of white card that sits within that frame. I've also cut out a piece of white card that sits slightly taller than the frame and a piece of acetate. So I'm inking up as we've done in all the other ones before with um, clear ink. I'm going to uh, add white embossing powder and I'm going to heat set it. Now I'm using a Versacolor ink called Chateau Grey. I'm using one of those tiny little ink blocks, so I'm just going over the whole card with that block. And as you can see, it gives a, it's a beautiful grey, really lovely grey. I use that ink quite a lot. Now I've taken the white piece of card that fits within the frame and I've stamped it and I've white heat embossed it as you can see. I've looked out some of my alcohol markers and I'm going to colour in this card. There it is, all complete. And I'm going to decide where on my, uh, my base card I want that to sit. I'm using my stamp positioning tool to do this, but you can do it without. So I've got my coloured base piece, and then on top of that I've placed my square of acetate. So when I'm stamping, I'm stamping not onto the base card, but onto the acetate above it. I'm using black stays on ink, because that will adhere to the acetate without smudging. And you can see that I've uh, just about finished inking up all of my daisies from my base card. Hopefully here you can see what I mean. So the base card is still intact and it's only the acetate that has been inked with the black. I've got some craft foam strips which I'm going to use to slightly raise my frame. 
I'm just making sure that my base card fits nicely into my frame and then I'm going to cut down my craft foam strips even thinner, I think I end up cutting them in half, um, to make really fine little strips to go around just three sides of that frame and that's where they're going to be stuck. You can see I'm using my glue pen uh, to make sure that I get the glue in exactly the right place and I'm just sticking the uh, craft foam on three sides only. You don't want it across the top, no 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 no, don't put it there because then you won't be able to slide your tag in and out of the card. So now I'm lining up my black inked acetate with my base card and making sure uh, I've got it matching and I'm going to use my glue to, uh, to stick the um, acetate in place. Once the acetate is glued in place then I can take my colourful square um, and I can decide where on my base card I want to position that. I want it to be slightly left of centre to allow me space on the right hand side of the card to add some extra words. I'll glue that in place to secure it. So the coloured card you glue onto the base card and then in your frame you should have your acetate piece glued in as well. And then the frame can be glued over the top of the whole design. So the frame is glued onto the base card. The tag, um, I cut some corners off it and I added an eyelet hole and some ribbon. And I've printed some words off uh, just from my computer and I used a, a typeset font and the words I chose were, you colour my life. If you want, you could add a little secret message on the back of that card as well. But I think that's a really fun card and I can think of so many ways that you could use this technique uh, to make all kinds of reveal cards. I hope you have a go at this one. I'll stop playing with it now and I will move on to the next card, I promise. For card seven, I've white embossed onto white card and I'm going to use another Versa colour grey. This time the grey is called Cement. It's slightly warmer than the Chateau Grey and I'm just going over the whole of my design with that colour. I'm going to mount it onto black card and then I'm going to take another of the words from my W plus nine die set, Smile, and I've cut it from the brightest pink glittery card you could imagine. This is a pack from Hobbycraft called Glitter Galore, and I've also used it as a very, very thin mat behind that grey. Now I'm measuring on the reverse of my card because I want to add some eyelets, and I'm going to use my cropper dial to punch the holes out and then to set the eyelets in place. I found a couple of uh, pink eyelets in my stash and I thought it'd be fun to use them on this card. So I'm going to secure my eyelets in place and then when they are fixed I'm going to thread through some pink raffia, sort of paper raffia type stuff. I don't really know what to call it. But I'm going to thread that through my card, I'm going to bring it to the front and I'm going to attempt to tie a bow. There we go, it's not the best bow you'll ever see but it's, it's a bow. And to make sure that um, it doesn't wiggle around too much I'm just going to secure that little piece of uh, raffia stuff at the back with a, a little spot of glue and then I'm going to glue across all of the rest of the, the reverse of that card and I'm going to mount it onto my black base card. And I'm going to attach my pink smile word that was cut from the same pink glitter card onto the front. And the card is finished. For card eight, I'm using Cottage Cuts square stitched dies and I've cut an aperture from a piece of white card. And I've also got a piece of acetate here that will cover that aperture. So I'm inking that up with my black stays on ink because that will adhere, you can see how well it adheres to the acetate, I had to really pull the stamp to, to have it released. And I'm going to use my alcohol markers to colour in my design. 
and I found that I needed to use uh, the strong colours uh, to colour this. The lighter colours just didn't show. Now once I've coloured up all of my design, I'm going to stick this into the aperture of the card. And you can see that how pretty that came out. The effect this gives you is of a stained glass window. I think it's quite quite interesting design. I quite like that. I've used another alphabet set from Craftwork Cards to write hello, and that is my card complete. So I'm going to leave you with close-ups of all of the cards that we've made today and say thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.